Okay, well, welcome to the how-to video for Sona. This is just uh, a how-to video, a demo video for students interested in using the Sona system for participating in research. What Sona is, uh, it's just an online organizational tool that allows us as researchers to be able to connect with you, the participants, to be able to schedule uh, research studies so that you can participate for course credit. Um, one of the first things you need to do is get to the Sona website. So uh, it should be in your course outline, um, but uh, if not, or you're having difficulty finding it, it's just typed out here. It's uoguelph-mcs.sona-systems.com. Again, that's uoguelph-mcs.sona-systems.com. And when you uh, come onto this website, just make sure that you're on the right one. Um, the Department of Psychology also has a SONA system, uh, so just make sure that it says Department of Marketing Consumer Studies here up top in the corner, uh, because otherwise you might be on the Psychology SONA system, and um, you know you'll be in the wrong place. So uh, you will need to log into the uh, system, and you'll have a user ID and password. Now these should have been um, emailed to you. Uh, you know, on the first day of class or within a week thereafter. So uh, if you haven't uh, received an email within about a week of the class's beginning that uh, gives you your login ID and password, definitely you can email us here at mcsres at uoguelph.ca. So that's uh, essentially MCS Research. Um, we're the systems administrator team and um, we'll help you out uh, if you haven't got any, uh, any kind of uh, login info. And just in general, any kind of problems logging into the system or questions about the system, definitely email us and we'll help you out. Um, you know, don't email your instructors uh, or your TAs or anything like that because uh, it's just going to be a, a real pain for them and they're going to have to defer to us anyway. So uh, certainly any questions at all about the Sona system, uh, uh, email us. So uh, your user ID and password should be the same as, uh, at least your user ID should be the same as your U of Guelph login. So typically this is the combination of your first and last name, something like that. Just ignore this student bit for now. Uh, your password has been randomly generated. So this won't be the same as you're used to. So for your user ID, just the, whatever you log into course, uh, course link or drift mail with, that'll be that portion. And then your password, again, it will be uh, something different. It's been randomly generated. If you, uh, for example, didn't, uh, uh, receive such an email that has this info for it from Sona or maybe you join the class late or something like that so that's why you didn't get an email uh, you can certainly try logging up with a new participant down here and fill out the info it's very simple very self-explanatory the only thing we ask is that you uh, fill out everything correctly and accurately so if you use a nickname if your name is Nicholas and you use Nick uh, it might be a tough time for us to uh, identify you in the system uh, same with your uh, your email. If you try using you know uh, Hotmail or Gmail or something like that, as opposed to your your uh, designated Griffmail, and uh, those keep on getting bounced back, and we we can't send emails to you. That'll create a lot of problems. So just make sure that you enter in all of your proper uh, appropriate information. Okay, so we're just going to log into the system here and just uh, demo it for you and show you exactly how it works. So. You see these three options. We have studies, my schedule and credits, and my profile, which are all the same here on your home page. Uh, one of the first things you might want to do is just take a look at your profile, make sure the info is correct. Uh, your name, your user ID, uh, your email address, and uh, if you want to change your password at this point, it's a good time to do it, something more memorable. And uh, just confirm uh, how many credits you are required along with what course you're in. So uh, we have here MCS 1000 DE. It's just the course we you know, temporarily signed up for, essentially. Um, if you're in more than one course and we're only showing one course here, so say you're in two courses, you're in uh, you know, MCS 2600 as well, um, but it's not showing, uh, make sure that you know, that is there. And uh, if there are problems, again, email us here on the bottom. Uh, it also shows us the amount of credits we've earned as well as the credits were required. So this should be stipulated in your course outline, but you can check it online here as well. Um, and essentially credits equate to percentages. So uh, three credits would be something like 3% of your final grade. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to sign up for a study. It's as simple as going to uh, study sign up. And uh, we can see all available studies. So right now we just have to have the one available um, then it's just called demo study. This is uh, really just a demo for you guys to show you how to sign up and uh, it tells you some of the, uh, uh, the extra information that you might need here. So we see eligibility requirements. Not all studies will have eligibility requirements. Essentially these are you know little extra things on top that uh, you must have or, or not have uh, in order to participate in the study. So for example for this one you must have normal color vision 
if you uh, are you know are colorblind or have problems identifying colors, this might not be the best study for you to sign up for. And uh, these will be different on a you know study per study basis. So some of them might you know be targeting a, sp a specific age range. So you know younger adults or or even older students. Some of them might be dealing with food research. So they might say you know you you can't be vegeta uh, vegetarian or vegan. Or maybe we're looking for vegetarians or vegans. Something like that. So uh, definitely take a look at those eligibility requirements before proceeding any further. If we think this might be interesting to us, we can click on the study name, and this will just bring up a little bit more info for the study. So we can see here just uh, you know the, the two lines kind of about what it is, along with a longer description. So this just tells you a little bit more about what would actually be happening in the study. Um, if you have more specific questions about the study, so if they, say for example about the eligibility requirements, um, you know, or about you know what exactly you'll be doing, the best thing to do is actually to contact the researcher. So their email and their name are listed here under researcher. Uh, again, don't contact your props about it. Uh, and if you contact us here at the admin, uh, since every researcher kind of runs their own study, um, we'll just defer you to the researcher anyway. So um, it's definitely best to contact them should you have any questions. Uh, it also lists the duration, so uh, how long the study is expected to take on average, uh, as well as uh, the amount of credits that you will be earning. Uh, it should note that not all studies are worth credit. Some of them are actually worth pay, so you can get cash for participating in studies. So just keep your eye out for those as well, as uh, you know, it's a good way to make a few bucks in between class. Uh, typically, we'll do something like uh, two credits per 60 minutes. Uh, that's uh, kind of the, the typical going rate at the moment. Um, and which is not too bad because if you need 6% for your class uh, in total, uh, that means you have three hours of work to do. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy work. Um, we also see these here, these deadlines. So we see uh, sign up and cancellation deadlines. These are just uh, essentially the same as if you were to sign up for an appointment with a doctor or a dentist. They ask a certain amount of notice before you sign up. So you can't really sign up last minute. And uh, you also can't cancel last minute. So it has to be canceled 24 hours in advance these change again uh, on a study for study basis so just make sure you uh, play, pay close attention to them okay so say we like this study and we'd like to see some of the time slots to consider signing up we just click view time slots all of the information that we need to sign up is listed here um, we see the you know the date so monday september 2nd uh, the time as well as where it is um, most of these take place on campus so you might want to take a look at the campus map to uh, familiarize yourself this is obviously fake. And uh, if we want to sign up, it's as simple as just clicking sign up. Sign up successful. It tells you to copy down the following information, which you can. Uh, however, you don't really need to because if we click on my schedule slash credits, we'll actually see the study that we're signed up for. So there's the name. If we click this, we'll actually bring us directly to that study. Uh, again, the, the date and time, the location, uh, your credit status. Um, so. Essentially, if it says awaiting action from researcher, this means they haven't granted you credit yet or they haven't uh, you know, marked your participation yet. Um, typically, it will say awaiting action until uh, you know, a day or two after you've participated in that research. Um, you know, if it says awaiting action, it's been a week since you've you know, participated in that study, definitely email that researcher and kind of say, uh, you know, uh, is there a problem or, or what's going on? Um, otherwise, it should say something like participated or credit granted, or you'll have one of two no-shows. So you'll have an unexcused no-show or an excused no-show. An excused no-show is something like, you know, my, uh, my dog ate my homework and uh, my, my car blew up and my house caught on fire, uh, so I couldn't make it to the study, in which case the researcher, you know, will, will give you a break. So you've got to get a, you know, talk to them about that, shoot them an email. If it's something like, uh, I just didn't show up or, you know, I slept in, uh, they're more likely to mark you as an unexcused no-show, which means you know you, you get penalized. And the way that the penalties work with Sona is if you accumulate two unexcused no-shows, um, in other words, there's two studies that you just didn't show up for for no reason, um, you are kicked off the Sona system, and uh, you're not allowed to participate in uh, research studies for the, the remainder of the semester. Um, that's okay, you can still get your marks, don't worry about it. Um, it just means you can't do it through research. Um, so normally you'd be doing the alternative, which is something like writing a research report based on a journal article. So again, consult your course outline for uh, further details on that. And uh, finishing off, it uh, just tells you what course uh, we're signed up for, so MCS 1000. So if you had a couple of different courses, you can uh, choose to assign which course uh, for that study, for which course you'll be getting credit. and. Uh, yeah, again, just another summary of your overall credits earned and credit requirements. 
So um, if we made a mistake or you know we decide we can't make it, all we have to do is hit cancel. And there's a secondary confirmation that comes up. Are you really sure you want to cancel? And uh, essentially that's all we have to hit. Yes, I want to cancel. And that's it. And then we won't be signed up for that study anymore. Um, if we head back here, uh, essentially we're not signed up for any setups, right? No studies are signed up. So as I said, it's um, it's a very easy system to use. It's very intuitive. Um, you know, if you have any questions at all about how to use it, having problems logging in, problems using the system, just email us here at mcsres at uofwealth.ca and we'll help you out as best we can. And uh, hopefully you guys found that informative. Take care.